Hello and welcome to the channel. Uh, this is the fifth and final video in a series I'm doing on how to build a WebEx web app. Now in the previous video we learned how to pull down uh, or get data from the WebEx servers, so today we're going to see how to send or post information to the servers. Now I have my uh, WebEx client open here so you can see this in action, and I've created this room here called Fetch Post Example. And now I'm going to pull up this little app I created uh, to post data to this room. Now I, I know it looks pretty bad, uh, and that's just because I haven't done anything to the front end. But uh, the functionality is there, and, uh, and that's what we're focusing on here today. Now whenever you interact with the WebEx servers, you'll need a personal access token, which again you can get from the developer site. Now in the previous video we hard-coded that token into the page, but uh, here we're going to do it a little differently. Here we're going to create this little password field so that you can just paste it in there. And then whenever we hit send, it'll grab the token from this field and make the request. So to demonstrate this, uh, I'll go ahead and paste it in. And then in the text box here I'm going to type, uh, I'm posting this using the Fetch API. And then I'll click Send. And we can see in my WebEx client the message shows up just as if we had posted it in the client. Uh, and it, of course it also shows up in the browser here uh, just so that we can see what text has been sent. Okay, a really simple app and uh, by itself it's probably not very useful or necessary. Uh, but the point is to show you how to post data to the servers and then uh, once you know how to do that you can imagine many different ways that this could be useful in your own custom app. Okay, anyway, let's uh, go ahead and see how we can post data in this video. Uh, so what I've got here is an empty folder called post example. And in this folder, I've got a blank HTML file. So we'll close that out and we'll go ahead and set our boilerplate code here. And let's name this uh, post example. Okay, we'll save that, uh, open up live server, then let's close out the demo, and uh, then open up the console so that we can see what's going on here. Okay, so we've got a little HTML to set up here uh, to start out with. So let's uh, do a few line breaks, and then we're gonna create a form and give it an ID of form ID. Then we'll set a div tag, and then inside this div we'll create our input for our form. We'll give it an ID of personal token, and then let's change the type to password. Uh, by changing this to password, it'll hide the characters with a, a bullet or, or whatever uh, that is when we type them in. Then let's create another div tag, and then inside here uh, we'll create a text area and give that an ID of message text, uh, because this is gonna be where we are gonna type our messages that we want to send to the server. Okay, uh, let's do another div tag here, and we're gonna create a button, and the type is gonna be submit. Uh, we don't need to give it an ID, but we'll go ahead and give it a label of send. Okay, let's go outside of the form here and we'll set another div tag uh, with an ID of output. Now, uh, even though we're not grabbing data from the servers uh, and posting up onto the page, uh, we do wanna go ahead and create an output here so that uh, we can create a space to see what we're sending to the server. You'll see that uh, here in just a minute. Okay, uh, that's all of the HTML we need. So let's come down here and create our script tags. And then inside here, we'll create uh, an event listener. So let's say uh, document.getElementById. And we're gonna grab the form. And then uh, this time we wanna listen to a submit event. And then when that happens, we want to call a function called send text. Okay, let's go ahead and create that function. Send text. 
Now, when we submit our form, it's going to try to submit what's in our fields to a file, uh, but that's not what we want. Uh, we just want to grab that information and uh, store it in some variables. So uh, what we can do is uh, pass in an event parameter here, and then here we'll say uh, e dot prevent default and this will prevent that from submitting to a file. Okay, now what we want to do is create some variables that can hold the information uh, from these fields. So let's start with uh, let token equal and we'll say document dot uh, get element by ID and remember we gave the token field an ID of personal token now we don't want the whole field, we just want the information that's inside of it. So we're going to say dot value. Okay, now let's do the same thing for the text box. We'll say let message equal and get element by ID. And we gave it an ID of message text and we want the value here as well. Okay, let's save that uh, so that we can see what we have so far. So we have our token field up here, and this corresponds to the input with the ID of personal token, so that when we submit the form, uh, whatever information is in this field, uh, it'll get passed to this variable token. And then the same thing with this text area. It has an ID of message text, and when the form is submitted, ah, oops, uh, let me fix that real quick. Uh, so when I submit the form, uh, the value of this field will get stored in this variable called messages. Okay, so uh, now we need one more variable here. Let's say uh, let room ID equal, and then here uh, I need to uh, grab the ID of the room that I want to post the messages to. So let's go over here to the developer website, and uh, we'll go to rooms and uh, then uh, click on this endpoint for listing rooms. Then we'll go down here and click run and uh, you can see uh, it returns uh, the JSON for all of my rooms. So this is a room ID for get post example and uh, we'll copy that. We'll copy that ID and then we'll paste it into our code Okay, now let's check our progress here. Let's go, let's go ahead and log our variables to the console. So let's start with a token. And I'll come up here and just type in um, one, two, three. We'll click the button and we get one, two, three. Okay, let's uh, check our message variable. Uh, let's say, let's just say message. Okay, click the button and we get message, good. Okay, so uh, let's move on. Let's, uh, let's get rid of that. And then let's go ahead and call the fetch function. Now the URL that we need is gonna to be to one of the endpoints for creating messages. So let's go back to the developer site and uh, we'll click messages. And then we can see here that for creating messages, we wanna use this URL and we're gonna to need to use the post method, of course. Okay, so let's go ahead and just paste that in here. And then we'll need to add a second parameter for our header. Okay, now uh, again, the method of course is post. And then header. And content type is the same as before. Application JSON. and authorization. And then here, uh, we're gonna do some back ticks. And just as before, bearer, dollar sign, and of course some curly brackets, and then we'll put in our token variable, which again uh, is defined as the value of the field at the time that we submit the form. Okay, oops, fix that, okay. Okay, uh, from here we need to think about how we can send the contents of our text box. So the first thing we need to do is we need to add a body. And that's going to take an object. 
And here we're going to say room ID, and this will be our room ID variable. Then we'll say uh, text, and uh, the text, of course, is going to be our message variable. Okay, so when we submit our form, it's going to submit the room ID, which is hard coded into the room ID variable. And this is required because uh, it has to know where to send the message. So if we don't add this, then it's not going to work. Uh, and then for the text of our message, it's going to submit this message variable, which is holding whatever text is in our text box field uh, whenever we click the submit button. Okay, so far so good, but uh, there's a problem here. Uh, remember, when we receive information from the WebEx servers, it's in the form of JSON data, but that's also true when we send information. So when we're sending and receiving, the information has to be uh, in the form of JSON. So what we can do is wrap this object in a JavaScript method called JSON stringify. And then uh, what this will do is turn our object into a JSON string. Okay. Okay. So from here, we can go ahead and add our dot then. And remember, just as before, this is going to take a function and uh, so we'll add our response with res and of course we want to return res.json and then we'll add our other dot then which also takes a function and here we'll pass in data Okay, so let's go ahead and check our progress uh, by logging that to the console. Uh, we'll save that, then go over, and I need to grab my personal token. Okay, and then I'll paste that into the password field, and then I'll type, uh, let's see, this is the second test. Click Send. And then you can see down in the console, I get this data object back. Now, notice first that we have only one object, and that's because we're only sending one object, uh, which is the message that we just sent. And uh, then you can see, if I, if I pull up the WebEx client, you can see that it sent the message to the client as well. Now, before, we would create a loop uh, and then loop through all of, all of our objects that we had. Uh, but here, since we only have one, we can just output whatever data we want straight to our output div tag. So here, let's, uh, let's just output the message that we just sent. So uh, let's comment that out. And then uh, let's create an output variable. And instead of leaving that blank as before, we'll set that equal to our data object dot text. Because here, all we really want back is the text of our message. We could get this other data, but we don't really need it. Okay, so then let's say uh, document dot get element by ID. And then the ID of our div tag up here, uh, where we want to send our output. And then we'll say uh, dot inner dot HTML and we'll set that equal to the output variable, which is holding data.text. Okay, we'll save that, come back up here and paste in our token again. And for the message, uh, we'll say this is the third test. We'll click send, and now we can see on the page uh, the message that we're sending to the WebEx servers. And we can see in my WebEx client, the message shows up just as if we had posted it in the client. Of course, this is pretty ugly, uh, the interface here, uh, but you could very easily add some CSS uh, and some styles here to, to make it look really nice, make it look really uh, professional. Again, the point is just to demonstrate how to create the functionality, okay? So I think uh, this is going to conclude uh, the series on creating a WebEx web app with JavaScript. I hope that you guys enjoyed the series and uh, that you got something from it. Uh, of course, I'll be back with more programming tutorials as soon as I can. Uh, so please don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.